When I retired in 2011, I think it was, and decided that I wanted to try painting because I had been interested in it as a kid. I even thought when I was in high school, maybe I'll go to art school, and then I thought, no, I better make a living. <laughs> so I went into something else. I, I, I was always interested, I think, in the notion of, I'll try that again someday. And so when I started, and, and some of you people were there when I first started, Anita is one of them, and Juanita is one of them. Some of you were, were oh, the people that I knew who were actually doing art, and I wasn't, and you encouraged me, and you got me going, and I started painting stories. These are stories. I paint stories. I don't paint vases of flowers and I don't paint landscapes. We have people who do wonderful landscapes and vases of flowers and all kinds of interesting things. But I paint people's stories. I spent a lot of years as a social worker and teaching social work in the St. Louis area. I spent time teaching problem kids. I was the last person hired one year in a district where they punish you for being the last person hired by giving you the problem kids. Uh, and I loved them. They were wonderful because they were interesting. And, and then I moved from a big city to a small town. And then I moved to another big city and I wound up as a house parent for six semi-delinquent boys. And so I have had the good fortune in my life of having a relatively stable, happy life. Two ex-husbands, but, you know. <laughs> <laughs> my life has been a contrast to the lives of some of the people I've encountered. When I was at the newspaper, which I did for about 15 years in St. John. I told people stories. I heard their stories. I wrote about fires. I wrote about accidents. I wrote about happy times when people were celebrating. The thing that pleases me the most is when I have people come and look at a painting and they put their own story in that painting. They discover something in it that speaks to them and, and that they can relate to. And when that happens, when somebody walks up to a painting and says, oh, you know, my mom quilted. I remember when she used to bring home the scraps. That painting, I don't care what it looks like, that painting is a success as far as I'm concerned because it's made a human connection with somebody. It's part of me has become part of that painting, which has become part of the person who's looking at the painting. And that's what we all ought to be about. You know, all the arts ought to be about connecting people in some way, whether it's literature or music or theater or architecture or painting. That's where we need to be going. If we can't all figure out a way to communicate, if we can't all figure out a way to be part of a whole, then we're just all kind of loose, like neurons bouncing around, which doesn't get us anywhere. So anyway, that's what I think about my stuff. And I will be happy to answer questions. Or if you're an artist, I would love to hear about your stuff and how you approach it. 
So I'm finished talking, unless you have a question, but I, I want to hear from you all. I want to tell you that you're my favorite artist in the whole world. Oh. <laughs> and I bought 10 of your minis for Christmas, oh. and I gave them to my grandchildren. Oh. What's the farthest that you have ever attempted? Here. Geographically, you know, I guess you consider your center St. Genevieve. Yes, what is here. What is this right here. Okay. Yeah. In this space. which is just very near Washington University. Yeah. And it was just for a weekend, and one of them called me and said, I need a painting for a prop. Can you quickly paint me a painting? So I quickly painted him a painting. I'm on good terms with my ancestors. Because <laughs> they need stuff. And I put up with them. And, and, and so we decided, OK, I'll take some stuff up there because there was a, also a space to show him in the place where they were putting on the play. And it was just for a weekend, and it was just kind of goofy and family thing more than anything else, because most of the people who came to see the play were people that we had known forever. Um, so in terms of a real show, this is it, and I, I am so thankful to the museum people here for doing this because it looks so wonderful. All oh, my paintings look better than they've ever looked. <laughs> <laughs> was in high school, oh, wow. which was in the winter of the blue snow, back in the 1950s, because I graduated in 1960. But when I first started, um, Anita and Iris and uh, some of the other ladies who are here had been going over to Mineral Area College because they have a senior scholar program there. So for just a few bucks, you could go over and you could work in the studio there, which is a wonderful studio. And there was free paint. <laughs> there was a lot of free paint. And Jim Wilson, who was a very talented figure to the artist, um, was at that time the director of the art program there. And Jim didn't exactly teach. You know, those of us who went there know that he didn't exactly teach. He kind of would walk by and say, that's wrong. <laughs> or he'd come over and he'd want to paint on your painting to show you how to do it. But he was the sweetest man, just a, a, a wonderful man who I think encouraged all of us. But it wasn't exactly formal training. So it's sort of been, eh, I'll try that. You know? and, and that works for me. I also discovered that I am, I'm going to be 80 years old on my next birthday, which is next summer. And at the point at which I started doing this, I was way too old to take instruction or direction from anybody. <laughs> that's not me. So it's, uh, I think of myself as self-taught, which does not mean that I have not learn things from other artists and, and, and just the general public along the way. In fact, I was telling somebody earlier this evening, Wendy, about an art teacher I had in eighth grade. Her name was Mrs. Gregory, and she had spent years working for Hallmark in Kansas City. She got a degree, in a teaching degree, into the North St. Louis, where I grew up and was teaching eighth grade art. And she knew that I liked to draw people. Most of the class was interested in flowers and trees, and landscapes, and stuff like that. 
I was always, uh, I, I grew up drawing paper dolls as a kid. And I wanted to draw people. And she made me learn every bone in the human body and all the muscle connections. And to look for things like, you know, an arm doesn't swoop like this. There's an angle, and you better get that angle right. And I think that that's the most useful thing anybody ever taught me about art. And that's how the human body is put together. And I still can't paint flowers and trees, and I don't try very often, but I really enjoy painting people, and I credit Mrs. Gregory for that. So. Anybody else? Hi, it's Um, I remember what I was going to say to you. Come on, I remember when you left, uh, when you retired, and then she went into, she, I'm going to do art. I'm, I'm going to start painting. I remember you saying that. And I think that what amazes me most about your work is your imagination. I mean, I know you're telling the story, and I think most of us who paint try to tell the story in some way, deal with what we do. But the fact that you're able to, it's so vivid, some of your stories, and it's coming out of your mind. Many of us need a reference of some kind, you know? But I was always amazed at the fact that I'm the one that says, did you really, did this really come out of your hand, you know? So, you know, I, I think that that is, I, that's what I really admire as much about your work as anything. Although I do like your very distinctive style too, you know, I, I think you've done an excellent job, Jean. And, uh, Thank you. I didn't pay her either. <laughs> <laughs> I just remember her coming from editor of the newspaper and she tells me, oh, you know, I've always been interested in art and I think that's what I'm going to do. <laughs> and she's like, I'm going to do that. And we've had a few people in the Guild. Dr. Hoy is another one I think of, but a different kind of work. But it's interesting how we do get some of the people who have had an interest in art over the years. They retire, and finally they get to do what they have always thought they would enjoy doing. They had to have a job first, probably, yes, which is yes. why they didn't go into it. But no, we have, uh, and, and you've done that. And uh, it's really, uh, I'm really proud of what you've accomplished. I have to tell you, it's been fun. You know, it's also, there's also some, agonizing that goes along with it sometimes. But uh, I've had a, a wonderful time for the past 10 years. I have enjoyed it so much and I've made so many good friends. And I've had an opportunity to do things like this, which I never dreamed that I would do. And, and so it's been really a, a terrific experience. And if you're not yet retired, <laughs> I suggest to you that you pick out something that you can feel kind of about it and just go for it and see where it takes you. Jean, what are you going to do the next 10 years? <laughs> I don't know. You can never tell. <laughs> you know, I've always kind of thought maybe I'll write an opera or something. So, but for the time being, I'm going to continue painting until the stories run out. <laughs> I don't know where your sense of color, you, your color is like no one else's color in the guild. I'm sure there are people out in the world here. But your color is like, <laughs> it's beautiful. It's so comforting. It's what Thank it is. It's comforting. It's not jarring. Well, I have to tell you, I don't like, not, not pastel work, but I don't like pastel colors. I don't like light colors, and that probably has to do with the fact that before I went completely gray, I had very dark hair, and my mother always said, you can't wear pink. You, know, you can't wear light blue, and she bought me reds and purples and things like that. So I grew up kind of not not thinking that pastel colors were real colors. You know, that's just oh, that's that must be faded because it's not bright. So I, I think that the, the 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 notion of light and dark and uh, uh, and the fact that I paint people people are less pastel-y than landscapes are. 
landscapes, you know, are more, I think, maybe they're more gentle. Maybe that's a good way of describing it. Not all landscapes, obviously. There, there's powerful seascapes and all, all kinds of things like that. But a lot of landscape painting is just kind of, well, that's beautiful. It, it makes me feel peaceful. You know? And I'm not into feeling peaceful. I just, <laughs> it doesn't strike me as something that I, I'm very interested in doing, you know? I think I would fall asleep if I tried to be peaceful. So. So do you think that puts an earth down? It's just got so much body and depth to it. <coughs> I don't clean my brushes very often. Anybody else? Or should we all go have We're ready to look? Okay. <laughs> Look, or you can have cookies. Your choice. And the cookies are good. <laughs> Thank you all so much for coming. Also, this is a Missouri Arts Council funded program, so we appreciate you supporting the arts.